says I'm live. I wonder if I'm live. You're live. I think I'm live. I'm live. Are you live? Are you guys there? Let's see if I can. I want to see if I can see you on the phonio and see if there's people. Oh, there I am. Oh my God, you guys. Thank you so, so much for being here. Oh my God, I love you guys. I am so, so grateful that you're here. I have to, I'm gonna vamp a little. Oh, Clara, Cheryl, oh my God, you guys. So I, I, I know this is lit like a hostage video. I know that like I'm gonna be single forever when there's a, this is terrible. And also I'm not home because I had to hit the road. So I'm in an undisclosed location, but I will explain these incredible things uh, in the video but I want to take a little time to just greet you and say thank you and pat Susie Baldwin. Oh, I love that you guys are back. You guys are so, so sweet. Thank you very, very much. That's Laura texting me saying, you're live, you're live. Uh, this is just such a fun and wonderful thing. And this is really going to be a cool episode. It's all about Palermo. We're going to show the video in one minute, but let me tell you, I have incredible news. Go birds. That's right. The Eagles are on tonight. Um, I had big news today, which is my last book, which was What Happened to the Bennetts. Um, I don't know if you remember it. I know a lot of you guys have read it because I recognize people who have emailed me about it. Um, but it got picked by Kirkus Magazine as being one of the best thrillers of the year. So what? I mean, I, that's really, I am really, really honored and I'm an excellent company and, uh, I'm very, very proud of this book and I'm very, very grateful to all of you for supporting it. So thank you for that. That is my big news of the night. Now we're gonna talk about loyalty. That's this book and see, it matches. And I guess we should roll the video and just like last time, I'm gonna come on and uh, talk more and give away cool prizes. So hang in there and here comes the video. I'll dance till the video's here. We need a video song. Video song. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, maybe not that. Maybe not that much. <laughs> it will be here very soon. I promise you. It's taken in Sicily in Palermo about one year ago, and you will see me. Be ready. Don't talk. to take you to the very center of the historic district of Palermo, the so-called Four Corners, because it is the intersection of Via Vittoria Emanuele and also Via Makeda. And as you can see, it's like a hangout. Like they play music, it reminds you of freshman year. It's totally fun. People are, you know, drinking and have food and just enjoying the weather. And the whole, the whole vibe in Sicily, or at least in Palermo, is very laid back. So everybody relaxes, it's, you know, typical things will happen when they happen. Have a little coffee, have a glass of wine, but I kind of like, I love the history here because it's really the heart of the oldest part of the city. And just the statuary is amazing. And the facades, I love the, the facades. You know, they're, they're well maintained, but they're not perfectly maintained. They just have so much character. in Palermo at a place called the Quattro Conti. And I'll tell you why that matters and why I have this, uh, this map here. First off, loyalty, as you know, is historical fiction. And it's set in the 1800s. And even though I like to joke around, I totally geek out 
about history and about my books. And no matter when they're set, I research, right? And I actually love that. So when I was in Sicily, I was going to set the book in the 1800s and I had wanted to find a map of Palermo in the 1800s. Now, Palermo is the capital of Sicily. It's in the northwest part of the state of the island. So I actually went all over the city and I found a rare bookstore that had antique maps and I found a map from the 1800s. This is a copy of that map because it was really old and fragile and I, it was all preserved and everything and I couldn't, I was too nervous that I would break it because that's completely possible. And uh, so I had it blown up and that's why I put it up here because I wanted to tell you a little, I won't go into the whole geography thing because I really want to tell you the crazy stuff that happened in Palermo. But it's so cool because Palermo, as you saw, it's Quattro Conti, which means four corners, because the city is divided into basically four neighborhoods and each has a corner. And what's really cool about that is from the beginning of time in Palermo, you can just look at this map. Obviously, it's too far away to read it, but you can figure out where it is right there. This is 1800s Palermo, which is the setting for loyalty. And here is where the Royal Palace is, which you can walk to, and the cathedral, which is in the novel. And when we get our, everything ready, or when the book is out of March, we'll have an interactive map. You can see it up close. You can locate every scene. And here is the cathedral and the Royal Palace. You walk down the street. The action in the book takes place right on the, four, the very center. The four corners are the center of Palermo. You walk right down the street, this street, goes all the way to the ocean. It's about a 25 minute walk, just like you saw. And here's the street that bisects it, which is called Via Makeda. So this is the center, the epicenter of Palermo. It never changed. Obviously that was filmed last year. The four corners are there exactly as they always were. And that's what's so cool about history, that it is present. Like we don't need to force this metaphor, but it's kind of cool that way, right? And I love the fourness. I will tell you not to go into the, a lot about the book right now, but there are four main characters in loyalty, partly because I was feeling so much the four different neighborhoods in Palermo, all centering in the Quattro Conti. So this is the part that the first chapter takes place here with a, a crime, of course. But what's interesting is what took place here in the present day. Because just a few blocks up from the Quattro Conti is where Lisa got her wallet stolen right here. And my passport, because I carry it with me like an idiot. And I will tell you what happened. So as I mentioned, I was there with Laura, my bestie, and we're doing all this research and we walk down the street. And then I'm like, oh, there's a band playing. Oh, how nice an authentic Sicilian band. They got all these mandolins, just like the beginning of the stuff. And you're like, oh, it's so, it's so hokey, but it's also very great and I'm loving it. And we're all getting all mystery over, you know, someplace I never lived. In any event, we're transported by the music because music does that, right? And then we walk away from the band and I'm going to get a water and I go in my backpack. There is no wallet. My wallet is completely gone because what we understand later is that the little band is a setup for the rubes from Philly who are going to stand there and go, this is so great, while their pocket is being picked. So then what happens is I, I couldn't even believe that I couldn't believe that I had my passport with me. I couldn't even believe that I had nothing. I have no ID. By the way, it's COVID. I mean, I, I don't have a, I have nothing, right? We go to a, a cop. All the cops are drop dead gorgeous and they're all well, they're, they're not really active. Let's put it that way. So I'm like, my wallet was still and they're like, get in line. And, uh, but it turns out the police station is not that far away. So Laura and I, we wander, we go to the police station. Now, let me show you proof positive that this is an absolutely true story because I, look, there's super hot cops and look, you're in it, like, what are you gonna do? Your wallet's going, you have to laugh. I mean, all your money, all your cards, all your passport, you're totally screwed. But I went to the police station and I did pose for a picture with the actual cops. So you will see that this story is not a lie. I think we can get it up on the screen. We'll do a screen share thing or whatever that's called. Meg, our genius, is doing this. I am uh, incapable of doing that. 
you know I'm incapable of doing that because I'm the kind of nimrod who walks around with her passport in a backpack, thus enabling every thief in the four corners on the map you saw. Let's see if this can come up. We'll see if this will come up. I don't know if it will. I'll see if we get it. If we can't, it doesn't matter. I just wanted to prove that everything in the story is true. I bet, if, I bet you if we can't get it up on the screen, I bet I can show it to you. I wonder if I can. Ah, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. All right, well, anyway. So we're in the police station. We fill out a zillion forms. The worst thing is we have no passport, so we can't even prove anything. Like Laura is vouching for me. I'm trying to find one of my books so I can say this is my author photo. The problem is I look nothing like my author photo. So in any event, we start calling around. The next day we're trying to find the embassy. You have to go to the embassy. To make a long story short, it turns out that you can't even go to the embassy in Sicily. You have to go to Naples. You have to get on a plane with no ID, no passport, and it's COVID because you have to go to Naples if you want to renew your passport. It's unbelievable. So I talk real fast, as you can see, and I talk real fast and I try to, please, sir, we have a police report. They're like, this is the wrong police report. You have to go to the Naples police. We go to Naples, we get the passport. But meanwhile, as you know, as I said in the past, um, I love food. So I figure, how can I possibly turn my frown upside down? Well, I don't know if you saw the movie Eat, Pray, Love, but Eat, Pray, Love is, has that scene set in this very famous pizza place in Naples. And I'm like, oh my God, uh, Laura, we're stuck here for three days because it took that long to get the passport and they wouldn't let us back on the plane. Oh, and by the way, Alitalia went out of business while we we're there, so that worked out good. And I was like, well, let's go eat pizza because when things go bad, you should just find some carbohydrates immediately. Like you need emergency carbs. So what do we do? We go to that, we look up on the online. In fact, you can Google it yourself. It will say like famous pizza place in Naples. We go, we ate where Julia Roberts ate. She was not there, but we ate such incredible pizza. I bet I can find that picture. Let me see. Dee, 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 for me. Yes, here's me. Can you see me? Me with pizza. It's very important that you see that because that is unbelievable pizza. It was just amazing. So that is the weirdness. And just as a kicker, which is a, this was a story I will show you how weird I am. So we're in the pizza place and I was so excited about the pizza and the fact that we were there in the Julia Roberts pizza place that I was like, I wonder if we can have a t-shirt because I am that, that Nimrod who loves to get the t-shirt. Like I have a lot of souvenir t-shirts, right? So they're like, I ask him like, do you have a t-shirt? Like, we don't have a t-shirt. And I see the waiter, he has a shirt. And I said, well, you must sell, you have a sh one of those kind of shirts. Cause you know, there's sort of like a language problem too. I'm like, I just want to, I want to buy a shirt. And he gives me a wink. He says, don't worry about it. I'm going to give you the shirt. Don't tell anybody. I'll find, I'll get you, I'll get you a shirt. And he's going to give it to me in a pizza box, but don't tell anybody what's in the pizza box. So I throw all this money at him, which was Laura's money, by the way. I paid her back, but what was I going to do? They stole my wallet. I give him the money. We walk out with the pizza box. We open the pizza box when we get outside. And what is in the pizza box? An actual shirt off the waiter. Not a t-shirt that's made or a t-shirt that the of the type the waiters wear. The t-shirt from the waiter. I mean, it smelled, well, it was pungent. It smelled like mozzarella and a very healthy Italian man, if you follow. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying it's the kind of thing that you don't forget. Of course, none of this makes it into loyalty. It's just the kind of stuff that I'll tell you secretly, behind the scenes, doing research. There I am. That is me with the Palermo police. Is that the coolest? My, I showed this to my daughter and she's like, why do you look so happy? And I'm like, because it was just such a fun and crazy night. And you can see that's their actual Palermo. It is the, it is the really no joke police headquarters in Palermo. They were super, super nice. And you can see the background. It's a very religious country. You know, they have the crucifix up there and calendars and they were super nice. And they, they felt bad that, you know, 
that I had my pocket picked listening to music, but what are you going to do? It's life is to be lived. And, uh, and I, I just, I thought it was just so wonderful. And I said, like, that's part, and it's, in a way it feeds into loyalty anyway, because loyalty is really about the rise of the mafia and also about justice and injustice in Sicily and all of those themes that I kind of love, but looked at through the eyes of these four characters and, oh wait, something's happening. Oh, more, oh, picture of me eating pizza. Want to see a picture of me eating pizza? Let's see. It's not coming. Forget it. Doesn't matter. You know what I look like eating pizza. Just imagine. I'll I'll act it out for you. <laughs> it's something like that. It isn't pretty. Okay. So that is the story of Palermo. You will see in future videos uh, more about scenes of Sicily, scenes of Palermo, why Palermo is relevant to the birth of the mafia, how it figures into the plot of loyalty, but I just wanted to tell you the dumb behind the scenes stuff because also I can't um, tell it straight, honestly. It's really, and also the truth is, it's one of the greatest things about my job that, and that's why I'm so grateful to you, that you get to write about these things that even though they're historical, they come to life in the present and you and you experience them and research. And I gotta tell you, it all, full, it all fills in. For example, we ended up going to Naples and even though we had the pizza, I got a feel for Naples. Naples is very important to Sicily. Historically, it was all the kingdom of the two Sicilies. And so in a way I had a different perspective. I actually put a little Naples in the book and that would never have happened if I didn't have to have the three day detour which forced me to eat the best pizza on the planet. So that is the story of Palermo. Now let's move on. I was very, very um, delighted because I think I, when you are about to launch a novel, you send it out to some authors you admire whom you don't really know and you go, if you like this book, would you say something nice? Let me read to you one of a wonderful, wonderful quote about loyalty from one of my favorite authors, Meg White Clayton. She said, Scottolini deftly explores the darkest passions and the deep compassion of human nature in a fabulously twisty historical thriller that will keep you guessing until the very end. I am so honored by that quote. I, it's lovely. I think it's so kind, but I think it's really what I was going for in loyalty, that it's twists and turns and it's about what matters in life, but it's also about the dark side. I mean, you can't have a crime, the crime like the mafia. What, what gives rise to the mafia without talking about that? And I think that matters. You know, justice is really important to me. And that's what I was trying to explore. Meg White Clayton is one of my favorite authors, and I've been reading her for years. This is her new book out. It's called The Postmistress of Paris. I love this book. It's historical. And I figured that a lot of you guys are historical fiction buffs. But if you're not, one thing I've learned, and believe me, I'm, I hope that you see it, is not, not, it's good to read different kinds of books. It's good to write different kinds of books. I write thrillers but I also write historical fiction now, and that doesn't happen without you guys and your support, and I really appreciate it. So I think people who like thrillers will also like books like, Meg, like Meg's, because it's, it's, a, it's a love story. It's a, the main character is so great, and you know we love a good, strong woman like we are. This is about a woman who really existed. It's based on a real person, and she pilots her own plane during World War II, and the best part of all the adventure she has is that she flies around in her plane with her dog. Okay, I'm sorry, I love this book. And that's part of the reason why. I don't know if you drive, I, I, I don't fly a plane with the dog. I barely wanna sit on a plane ever, but I, I drive in the car with the dogs all the time. I'm not having fun in the car if the dogs aren't there. I'm always like, wanna have fun? They think wanna have fun that means we're going in the car. And it is kind of. So, and I love the strength of this heroine. I love the adventure she has. She falls in love. I don't want to tell you what happens. There's plenty of twists and turns in this too. But Meg is a wonderful, wonderful writer. And I think you would love her novels. And I know you read more than plenty of books in different types of genre. So I hope you will give The Postmistress of Paris a try. And I'm very, very honored to, um, by Meg's quote because she is such a terrific writer. And so thank you, Meg. So 
that is now we go to give things away woo um this week we are so let me try to calm down and explain so we are running a sweepstakes slash contest slash i don't know what lawyers want us to call it i'm a lawyer and i don't even know what to call it guess what because i'm not like a sweepstakes lawyer i'm like a real lawyer huh, no sorry anyway so this is all you got to do rules are on the website it's a pre-order sweepstake it's great if you pre-order the book that is loyalty and you get send the thing you'll follow directions it will get sent to me we will put it in a big bin here is the big bin of all the orders but you don't have to order look on online you'll see exactly what you know what to do but in any event you should enter because we're going to pull a winner every week every monday night 7 30 i'm blowing out my hair i'm dancing like a fool i'm doing the video for you guys sorry this is how i talk to myself um now you know why i'm divorced twice so we're going to pick a prize every week. These prizes are amazing because I love you guys and I appreciate you. It's my way of saying thank you for your support. Like really no joke, put your money where your mouth is. All of these themes, all these, these um, what are they called? Prizes are Italian themed, Sicily themed, and it's really, really cool. So please, and also if you don't win this week, don't be sad because you can win next week. Your, your name stays in the hat. So enter, there's like, I'm gonna do like 22 of these. I have 22 videos that you'll see all over Sicily, all over Palermo, inland, fishing village, a lot of Sicily. If you're watching the White Lotus on HBO, I can show you more than that because they can't get out of the bedroom if you know what I'm saying. Okay, here is, so here's what we're giving out this week. This is an amazing costume maker. I know because I own it and I love it. And it's great. I can't say make a lot of homemade pasta, but I make enough to sort of be Italian. And that is what we're giving away this week. And then I'll show you what we're giving away after we pick this winner. I think that's the order of business. This is our new container because we had so many entries that we need a new container. And it's also yellow because everything is lemon for Sicily, as you will see when we talk more about the book. Okay, so I'm gonna, this is completely just me in a room no shenanigans right this is all the, okay here we have it let's see who won the pasta maker da -na 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 -na. five hours later she manages to open the thing okay loved eternal and cannot wait for loyalty so much fun on facebook looking forward to monday nights denise bush from Philly, Denise Bush from Philly, you have won. You won the pasta maker. Yay. I am so happy. Amazing, a Philly person. Last week it was Missouri. The fix was not in, I guarantee it, but that is really wonderful. Denise Bush, we will send it to you. I think your address is on her somewhere. And um, we really, really appreciate it. Okay, let me show you what's up the giveaway next week, which is very personal to me because I own this. Look at this. Now this is, Sicily is known for a lot of things and in future videos, I'll show you all the different kinds of things. But one is this special stoneware like Majolica. It's, got, it's very like beautiful patterns and really pretty colorful. And when you go throughout Sicily, you can find it all over. And this, there's artisanal. This one is from William Sonoma, because honestly, I'm a practical kind of girl. And I'm not going to give you some dishes that you can't put in the dishwasher. Okay, like, I just think you need to be able to do that. So I this is part of the set. This is the smallest thing that I could take on the road. There's four of these and a big pasta bowl. This is like a pasta dish and it comes with a big pasta bowl. And that is what's up for next week. So this is what I'm gonna draw next week. I am excited about it. You can match me. If you enter, please do enter because the worst thing that happens is you get a really great book and you could win a prize. There's a lot of prizes and there's not that many people. It's not like the Powerball. I mean, my God, look, I mean, it's not that many. So the, the odds are really great you could win. So please consider it because it is my thank you for your loyalty, for your kindness to me, for your support. 
I really, really appreciate you guys. And I guess I should let you go to live your life, but I'll see you next Monday night, 7.30. I'll be back home then, and I will uh, make sure I draw my eyebrows on better. Next week with eyebrows, baby. Woohoo! Oh my God, I guess I end it. I don't know how to end it. <laughs>